If you're like me and you don't want people hacking into your home assistance server, then join me and I'll take you through how to make it more secure using time-based one-time passwords. Coming up. Hey, welcome to Hascasts. If you're new here, then my name's John. And my goal is to make it easier for you, whether you're a beginner or a developer, to get in to keep up to date with and make the most of home assistant and home automation in general. So if that sounds of interest to you, then feel free to subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell if you want to know when my new videos are released or when I go live. Okay, so a lot of people have their home assistant server exposed to the public using something like Dyn DNS or Duck DNS. That means that anybody that finds it can visit your server, then it's just a case of trying to guess your password. I know that. How about you add a one on the end of your password? So the solution, in my opinion, the solution has been recently introduced to Home Assistant and that is time-based one-time passwords or TOTP. And that means that it's no longer enough just to be able to guess your password. They need a device or they need access to your shared secret, which is a secret. So a quick look at how it works, then I'll show you how to set it up and how to recover just in case you do lose your phone. So basically your server creates a shared secret key I know that's a contradiction in terms, an, oxymor an oxymoron, uh, that you will say scan into your phone via a QR code. And your phone then converts it back into the shared secret key. Uh, it can then do a little bit of magic and it will give you a six digit password. You then enter that into Home Assistant and make sure that the app and Home Assistant are both singing literally from the same timesheet. If, time if their times don't match, then there'll be a problem and it won't finalize the TOTP setup. So if you decide to take the plunge and delve into TOTP, then you need to make sure that you're running at least version 0.77 of Home Assistant, as that's when TOTP was introduced. So once you've gone through the onboarding process, that's creating your user account in Home Assistant. If you look in the sidebar, at the top of the sidebar, you'll see a circle with your initial in it. Click on that circle and that will take you to your account page. On that page, you will see your multi-factor authentication section. Notice I didn't say authentication. So if you need a two-factor authentication uh, and under that, you will see TOTP. If you click on the enable link, that will bring up the TOTP setup section. But don't do this yet. If you're going to set it up, then I advise you to watch the rest of this video and then go back and watch the important bits. Now, if you need an authenticator app, then you haven't got one yet, then I thoroughly recommend Authy. I've recently started using it, and I think it's better than the alternatives I was using, LastPass Authenticator, uh, maybe Google Authenticator beforehand. And I think Authy is, uh, is significantly better. So to set it up, click the plus icon and either scan the QR code or enter the code manually. It will immediately give you a six digit password. Uh, you enter that straight into Home Assistant and that will let Home Assistant know that you are literally both singing from the same timesheet. So what do you do when things go wrong? Right, well, if you are using Authy, then you have the, uh, the option to securely back up your codes online. If you don't want to do that, then you have a number of other options. Option one, if you're already logged into Home Assistant, then simply visit your user page scroll down to the TOTP section and click disable. That will remove TOTP for the time being until you re-enable it. But what happens if you're using something like Google Authenticator, which doesn't allow secure backups? Well, if you have access to your configuration files, then you could visit uh, config.storage.auth-module.totp. Uh, that's a JSON file. In there, you will find a key named users. Now, if there's only one entry, then it's you. And if you delete that entry, be very careful deleting it. Uh, you can then log into Home Assistant and you won't need your TOTP password. Note that I am not responsible if you decide to go into any of your config files and delete things. It's on your head. Okay, option three, this leads me on to my super happy fun top tip, which is if you're going to set up TOTP, set it up from a device that allows you to print, such as a computer. And when you get to the QR stage, when you get to the QR code stage, print it off. Print off the QR code and the uh, shared secret. This will act as an offline backup. 
and that will mean that if you lose your phone or anything like that then you can just rescan the original QR code so remember top tip print it off now in case you didn't know home assistant has recently introduced authentication tokens this simply means that instead of giving an app service or program your home assistant password all you need to do is now create an authentication token for them and then you can revoke that token if need be without changing your password let's say you're doing a YouTube video and you stupidly put your home assistant password uh, into the video uh, that is less of an issue because if you're using tokens you can just refresh that token and update the program that you're using this is yet another great step forward for the home assistant ecosystem and if you're interested in that then by all means you can watch my video on it click on the top video now if this video is quite new then the chances are I may not have finished it yet not to worry you can always watch another great video by clicking on the bottom one any questions comments or queries are welcome please we all need to learn from each other thank you for your support bye bye